this is Stephen Fortner with Music Player Network, and we are here in Nashville, Summer Nam 2019, at the legendary Ocean Way Studios with some legendary Nashville keyboard players. Uh, we have David Doran, who has played with Marie Osmond, Tim McGraw, Rascal Flats, Jimmy Allen, uh, City of Enoch, and, and notably Engelbert Humperdinck, I caught <laughs> yes, in your credits. Yeah. Nice. Um, yes, Charlie Judge. Uh, who has uh, played with Keith Urban, Kid Rock, Vince Gill, Dolly Parton, Blake Shelton, Carrie Underwood. And uh, outside of that box, I noticed you've done some arrangements for Megadeth. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> that's one of those uh, other category gigs. But yeah. yeah, it's fine. I mean, I came from a, a pop and rock world before I moved out here, so uh, it wasn't a big stretch for me to get out of the country world. Uh, but... But yeah, that was fun. Okay, and sitting to my immediate right is Steve Nathan. Uh, the short list would just be to tell you things he hasn't played on. <laughs> uh, and your, your stylistic range and the artists you've worked with have just covered everybody from Natalie Cole and the Commodores to uh, country stars like um, Jason Aldean, Alan Jackson, Toby Keith, Keith Urban, Faith Hill. Uh, you played with Huey Lewis, Kelly Clarkson, Billy Joel, Cindy Lauper. And then we're going back in, into some, you know, artists like B.J. Thomas, yeah. Connie Francis, yeah, uh, things like that. And and you did some very early work with Spyro Gyra. I did. I was actually on their their first record. I was, I was in the band that became Spyro Gyra just shortly after I moved out of Buffalo. So um, they flew me up to New York and and had me overdub a little bit. I played some clavinet and and a synth, I think, on on that record. We're friends with those guys for, for years, played in and out of different bands for a long time. Okay. I also played with Megadeth. You did. Uh, <laughs> nice. This is a, nice. and not to not to derail, but it, when, when people ask me about the diversity of music, they go, well, is everything you do in Nashville country? I always, that's my example. We're going to get to that, in fact. In my example of the day I had Reba McIntyre at 10 a.m. and Megadeth at 2 in the wow. same day. So wow. nice. it, it, we do get a lot of diversity. And, of course, you left out my most famous credit, Elvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> I did see that. You didn't, didn't see that? I, didn't, I did see it. No, I didn't see it. I didn't know whether to mention it. Uh, oh, sure. I played on Urban Chipmunk. <laughs> I'm going to leave the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah we can just, we can just yeah, yeah. end this. Right 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 <laughs> Chipmunks. To my left, Matt Rawlings, multi-platinum Grammy winner, uh, thousands of recordings and tours, Lyle Lovett, Bette Midler, Keith Urban, the Dixie Chicks, Shania Twain, Delbert McClinton, love him, uh, and even Neil Diamond. Indeed. Also on the heavy metal side, uh, 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 Motley Crue and Queensryche. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Awesome. Well, that's right. Awesome. I played on Queensryche for you. Yeah, you did. That's right. I hired you. And he played with Ray Charles, which... Uh, that's right. Oh, wow. wow. And I also want to acknowledge that Matt has contributed a lot of wonderful content uh, to John Regan and myself at Keyboard <laughs> Magazine when I was the editor there. Yeah. Well, Thank you so. for all that. Yeah. Uh, and Michael Whitaker. Yes, sir. Um, one of my favorite things you do is the Bottom 40 band. Thank you. Uh, the cover of Happy just blew me well, away. Top 40, the bottom 40. For sure. <laughs> That's the best. Oh, it's this band that does yeah. just these ultra muso covers of pop tunes and they just kill. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam's Family Values, a film you've worked on. Uh, you've done a lot of film work. Uh, Marvel X Men animation TV series. Uh, you've toured with the likes of Mac Davis and Lionel Richie. Uh, and you've done house band work on Jimmy Kimmel. Mm -hmm. I've got to ask, you probably know Jeff Babco. I did. Yeah, I would sub for him when he would go out uh, cool. with James Taylor or who else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, joining us soon, but we think he is upstairs on a session, will be David Cohen, who has played with Florida Georgia Line, Carrie Underwood, Kid Rock, Reba McIntyre, Steve Tyler, Rascal Flatts, and, and many others. It's the one of the group that's actually working today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We got lucky. We got lucky. <laughs> Very privileged today. Um, so what I wanted to start with, which is a very sort of general question, is um, what essential qualities do you guys think distinguish a Nashville keyboardist from, let's say, an L.A. keyboardist or a New York keyboardist? Mm -hmm. wow. I think, I think as an, in general, I think a session player, there, I think it... it L.A., Nashville, New York, I think to be a successful session player, you have to have, you know, certain sensibilities, whether you're in L.A. or Nashville. I mean, Absolutely. you have to be a chameleon, you have to, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to, you have to have great time 
You know, you have to be able to play yeah. rhythm, no matter what the style is. And you have to be kind of a psychologist. You have to be able to read the room and, uh, and be able to keep it light and kind of figure out what your role is. If you're the comedian, if you're the quiet guy, if you're the serious guy, whatever it is. Um, so I think that I think that is just universal to 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 be guys who make it as you know yeah. men and women who make it as session musicians. I think that's those are required. But I don't know anybody else. Yeah, as I think so much of it is is universal. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that it's still as much now as it used to be, but the one glaring difference to me here is that. There's almost no manuscript reading here. There's no, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and in New York and in LA, it used to be that a lot of times what you were going to play was written out ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And what drew me to Nashville was similar to what drew me to Muscle Shoals was that um, you you had to be able to play. You certainly had to have all of these the qualities of listening and and conceptualizing, but. It appealed to me because the musicians on the records that were made here were seemed to be more collaborators, artistic yeah. collaborators in the final mm -hmm. product. Uh, we all go into a room and they may play us nothing more than the than the artist strumming a guitar and singing the song, and then it's up to us to figure out yeah. mm -hmm. you know, what true. should we play. What's true? You know, I mean, you, we write and not just keyboard players, but all I mean, yeah, all the musicians. You know, we, are, we right. produce our parts in right. a sense, and right. our producer is going to guide us. But I mean, that's part of the job here: is you come in and you bring yeah. your game, and you, you know, that's why any of us would get hired. It's because the producer says, "Oh, he's, you know, I don't know what I don't know what this needs, but he's going to know, so I'm going to hire yeah. him." Exactly. You know? And I would say one other thing that I think is a big difference is how fast you have to be yeah, recording yeah. songs here in Nashville. Like Very when I work true. out in L.A., there's a luxury of time that you have there that we don't get a lot of times in Nashville. Yeah. I mean, the demo session world still tries to get five songs in three yeah. hours yeah. completed, mm -hmm. you know. And so to have, yeah. and especially now as a keyboard player, I feel like there's a lot more than just playing piano or b3 it's like now we want soundscape things happening yeah. and that's to do that in 35 minutes and have yeah. a song sound like a record yeah. it's it's a it's a heavy task yeah. you, know? you got to know your tools you got that's know, right you, you gotta you yeah. gotta know how to get in there fast and 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 come up with something that means something and the, the number record. system here is i mean yeah. that's different from la it's used a little right. bit in la but i was gonna yeah. ask about that yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that's, yeah. A huge, that's true it's a, yeah. big, a big difference well, i haven't grown up in la i mean yeah being an LA guy, so like when I came in here, the only thing numbers I knew was figured bass from music yeah, school. Right. So it was like, but luckily, you know, I mean, people still call you know call out one, four, five, six, whatever, mm -hmm. in LA. But it wasn't like like reading a number the chart. charts, yeah. Right. So that was uh, that. I mean, fortunately, I was able to adapt pretty quickly here. Yeah. But but uh, I got, I mean, and, and you know. It, Every number chart is different here. It's not like uh, depends on who writes it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it, right. So that was confusing. I had a guy one time. I won't say it was, but it was real country. But it was like the older country that actually changed chords like a lot and modulated. Yeah. And, oh yeah. But he used like like two and a half over four and a half. What? And, wow. and, uh, I didn't know that yeah. So it. Yeah. Right. No, I use it. <laughs> But it was like uh, it looked like a it looked like a calculus uh, <laughs> test. Oh my God. So I That's failed the... miserably on that, but as did everybody else who was from Nashville. But but wow. Wow. you know you just see every you got to interpret the chart uh, in a lot of different ways, and I think you hit it on the head. This in LA, I mean, we'll sit with the producer for hours, wow. like going over what right. a perfect part is. Yeah. And here, I mean, I'm sure there are those producers, but in general, it's way faster. Yeah. So we used faster. to do that 30, 40 years ago. When I was in Muscle Shoals, it, you rarely uh, got more than one song in in a session, often in a day. Right. Um, Rick Hall, it was not unusual for Rick Hall to take two, three, four days on Us. a song. Not, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just not... He was he was a great producer, but a terrible communicator. So yeah. he was not good at telling musicians what he mm -hmm. wanted. He only knew it when he heard it back. Um, but yeah, it's it's not like that here anymore. Right. It was when when we first came up. Still, yeah. I, when, when I came up in the '80s and started working for Jimmy Bowen, I mean the the norm then and the budgets were big. 
is they'd hire you for five days and you do a song session, <coughs> two sessions a day for five days, and it's a ten song oh. record. Yeah, yeah. With great yeah. catering in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> that was the yeah. Well, yeah. And, and the other thing that Nashville has this really uh, regimented union session schedule yeah. thing, which yeah. which yeah. makes it work because you can have. Uh, a lot of different things going on in, in, in a day, like Steve was talking yeah. about going from Reba to, to uh, Megadeth. Megadeth. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we have very structured three hour sessions, and usually 10 to 1, 2 to 5, and 6 to 9. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's sort of ties in with what mm -hmm. you were saying about having to work fast and all that. It's just, it's a very different. Uh, it's world, a, but but it's yeah. it's you know it's, it's really good. I, I actually I, I love that about Nashville. I th it was exactly what I thought I would hate when mm -hmm. when I, mm -hmm. I I was in Muscle Shoals and and work was starting to dry up there, and I was loading synthesizers into a station wagon and driving to Atlanta or to yeah. uh, you know uh, Birmingham, Nashville, wherever to just to work. And my wife finally said, "You you need to pick one of these towns, and we're going to live there, and and that's mm -hmm. where you're going to work." And I thought I would hate it because I'd, you know, I'd come from a place where you were, a, you know, a record. You, you were working Tuesday and Wednesday, and people drifted in between ten and eleven and twelve, and then yeah, you started yeah. to work. And if it took you until two in the morning to get what what they wanted, that's that was what it was. Oh yeah. And yeah. I thought, well, boy, I'm just gonna, you know, I, there I was playing all day long with Roger Hawkins and David Hood and, yeah. and Barry Beckett, and thinking I'll hate Nashville. But getting to go from a group of great musicians in the morning and then go get a bite of lunch and walk into another room and there's another group of great musicians. Yeah. That was really, uh, it was really thrilling to see. Good. Oh, I was just, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, it is this whole schedule thing. I, I love it, too. There's one thing that used to happen in LA when everything was so loose is you'd end up sitting around and waiting for yeah. hours. It's just, it's exhausting. And even if you're getting yeah. paid for that, yeah, it's, horrible. it's just, yeah. it's not how you want to spend your time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also that brings to me like the union, you know, this is still, this is kind of the last city where at least records being made are still getting run through the union. I lived in LA yeah, for yeah. almost a decade and it was just the wild west. I mean, the union for mm -hmm. film and TV is still active and the RMA, but the mm -hmm. RMA out there is primarily for orchestral musicians. I mean, that's the that's the hardcore, mm -hmm. you know, um, records. It's a negotiation every time, you know. You get a call and it's like, we want, you know, all day for, you know, whatever. 600 bucks, really? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but, you know, coming back here, it's, you know, it still remains, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. a... It's the union is is very supportive of the musicians. And the musicians are very supportive yeah. of the union, and, and it works. There's a lot of non. Oh, there's tons tons of non. There is everywhere, yeah. and it's just there isn't. Yeah. You know, and, it's and we're cutting records on so on smaller budgets than yeah. than we used. Yeah, to. Yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah. so many people. I mean, smaller scales. You, having one guy doing it in his house, one guy. I mean, that's just so prevalent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Still, yeah. That's the, you know, that's the new, new, the new way. And I just want before we move on to echo one more thing that Matt was talking about, which is you have to be you know have to have a great attitude and you have to be a chameleon. The universal, yeah. universal aspect of being a session player, no matter what city you are. And, and I find that a lot of times you walk in to play on something and you might not like it. Oh, yeah. It might be something that's kind of awful, you know. Uh, <laughs> but I've I've discovered that the only way for me to do a good job and to be happy is to find something to love about exactly. whatever it is I'm working on. You have to kind of fall in love exactly. with the song and yeah. whatever's going on yeah. to get some excitement and inspiration so that you're adding something. Well, and I think it, I think at our best, we're, you know, we're, from, from my standpoint anyway, when I go into that room and I'm hired, I mean, I'm, I'm in a service. Like, my job is yeah, to be yeah. a service. Absolutely. Right. To the yeah, artist, absolutely. the producer, to the song. So there's something. Yeah. There's yeah. something in there, and and yeah. either, you know, well, you know, I I, I always learn something, yeah, especially if it's something that my first blush is like, what the, you know, yeah. <laughs> I played on, I played on Tim McGraw's Indian Outlaw and uh, first yeah. James Stroud years ago, and uh, and I remember the sitting in that room with all these musicians listening to the demo of this song, and we looked at each other going, what the fuck, is <laughs> you know, yeah. and, you know, it just, you know, but. but yeah. Yeah. You know, we're all, we all take so much pride in what we do. It's like none of us is going to go in here and sabotage something. You know, we're still yeah. going to go in and like, all right, I'm going to give it my exactly. best. Yeah. Yeah. And there it is, like this I, massive I've, hit I've record. I've often said that's the, the essential core of what the job is, is 
in worst case scenario, if if you if they hand you a room full of horse shit, you have to say there's got to be a pony in there somewhere. <laughs> 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 and, right. Otherwise, where are they shit? Yeah, where are you, <laughs> you, and your job is to find that pony and clean yeah. it up and polish it up uh, and make it as good as it can. Put a know. saddle on it, brush it out. <laughs> Standing with